Hello, thank you for having me. I'm Yurai Tomori from Dimension and I would like to talk about digital humans. More specifically, in the context of volumetric video, visual effects and virtual production, which we have a unique combination of experience with. For example, here you can see some of our recent work in those fields. We are seeing a huge demand for digital humans in our industry. And to give you a bit of context, we think that this growth is fueled by more accessible virtual reality hardware and wider augmented reality distribution via mobile phones and the emergence of the metaverse. Along with rising viewers' expectations, which require a high quality and realistic content, this results in more complex productions with more assets done at shorter time frames. Digital humans play an important role in that content, and they are notoriously difficult to get right, and that's our specialty. To meet the growing demand for scalable production of realistic digital humans, we combine our volumetric video and avatar creation pipelines. And that's the theme of this presentation. I will talk about volumetric video, avatars and compare them. And I will cover some of the inherent limitations of working with volumetric video and how we are tackling them. When we talk about volumetric video and avatars, we are in principle talking about two sides of the same coin. Each of them has different advantages and use cases. Volumetric video is a more scalable approach to producing very realistic digital humans. They feel very real because we aren't trying to build them in a bottom-up fashion, but are rather capturing them directly with cameras. Avatar approach, on the other hand, gives us the most control about the digital human, but at the cost of time and the number of iterations it requires. However, it is a familiar ground and the most common approach for visual effects, virtual production and games. To, to give you an example of the efficiency of volumetric video approach, we delivered 50 characters for fashion brand Balenciaga during four weeks with a team of four technical artists. Avatar approach would require an order of magnitude longer time frame for that delivery. However, it would provide us with the finest control about the results, but that wasn't require, required for this particular project. In principle, volumetric video typically replaces tedious work of many artists with extensive compute and reduced artist input. In terms of volumetric video pipeline, we are pretty much designing new workflows as each project has a unique set of requirements. While the avatar pipeline is tailored to project needs as well, there are many common steps. Solutions for certain problems are usually standard in the visual effects industry. However, there is still a lot of innovation in this, in this pipeline especially for difficult or time-consuming steps. For example, some recent work includes Epic Games Metahumans or Ziva Dynamics Face Trainer. The highest quality volumetric video is usually captured with multi-camera stages. On the other hand, Avatar Pipeline, broadly speaking, consists of the outlined steps. Multi-camera systems are very interesting, but we will leave that to the next presentation by Andrew Sarl from IO Industries. In this example, you can see our mobile stage as well. On the right side, there is a typical animation rig of, for avatars. In either case, the result is a realistic animated 3D human, which can be integrated into a virtual environment. If needed, assets can be compressed as well, for example, you can see this one on your mobile phones now. So far, I have used the volumetric video term for one particular implementation of it. It is, however, a broad term that covers multiple techniques, products and research projects, each of them having their own strengths and weaknesses. These are the usual qualities one has to consider when deciding for using one. There are roughly 30 years of research in the field of volumetric video, and I have picked three projects which I find relevant for this presentation. Colette's work introduced state-of-the-art solution at the time. It has been commercialized, and that's what we utilize and build upon at Dimension. We think that it provides a good quality-to-cost ratio. 
Google's work introduced the light stage in addition to the multi-camera stage. This enables accurate inference of normal maps and physically based shading parameters. And Bagautino's work produces realistic and drivable avatars with applications in telepresence. Let's talk about some of the limitations of volumetric video. While it typically provides more realism than avatar-based approach, editing the content is more challenging. We are increasing ed editability of volumetric video in order to increase its applicability in visual effects and virtual productions. To do that, we have had to investigate every part of the production process. In particular, we capture additional information during the shoot, we extract more meaningful information from the captured data, and we refine the information in a visual effects-friendly way. The first limitation I would like to talk about are the missing shading parameters that are needed for physically based rendering. The system which we use outputs a combined texture which contains shadows and specular highlights components. Despite our efforts to have uniform lighting in our stage, you can see shadows in the unwrapped textures on the left. We address this limitation by optimizing for reflectance properties in a differentiable rasterizer which provides reasonable quality, but at a significantly lower cost than that of developing a light stage as used by Google's work. This allows us to integrate volumetric video assets better into the virtual environment and react more realistically to lighting changes. In this example, you can see one of our producers in a shiny jacket. The jacket reacts realistically to lighting changes, as opposed to the painted-on feeling which we would get otherwise. Another limitation which we address are motion vectors. It is a common requirement by visual effects productions in order to render digital humans realistically. We utilize meshes for inferring it. This lets offline renderers use them, like on the image on the right. On the left we can see one of our captures without motion blur, and in the middle is a visualization of motion vectors indicating direction and magnitude of the movement. Another challenge we face is editing captured motion. However, our representation of volumetric video doesn't allow for direct animation and lacks global temporal coherence. We address it by image space skeletons inference. In this example you can see two overlaid versions of the same character. Grey character is the source volumetric video and green character is after slight reposing. On the right you can see their skeletons. Visual effects productions have perhaps the highest requirements for visual quality. And this is a challenge we are facing when capturing and pro processing volumetric video. While our captures work well for middle and background characters, they don't quite hold up in close-ups, like the example at the top. This is partly caused by the texture quality and volume size trade-offs that we have to make. We address this by introducing additional face-focused cameras, which improve geometry and texture resolution, like in the example below. Our standard capture configuration consists of 50 visible and infrared spectrum cameras. We add 10 more, which are tightly framing actor's face. The additional cameras are the yellow ones in this visualization. This increases camera coverage on chest and face, like in the figure on the right. The left figure is showing our standard configuration, which aims for uniform camera, camera coverage. Increasing resolution on face lets us feed a coherent mesh onto incoherent volumetric video. This enables many applications in the visual effects industry for the highest quality content, like in this example. In order for our solution to be general, we need to handle many difficult to reconstruct cases. 
This is the last challenge I will discuss in this presentation. For example, fast moving objects, objects which are thin or transparent. We address this need by rigid prop tracking. This allows us to replace a prop as a post process. This approach requires a separate motion capture system, like the optical one in the figure on the left, or high contrast markers which can be seen in the middle and on the right figures. Let's recap what we have talked about so far. We have compared volumetric video and avatars, each with, with its own advantages and applications. We have also outlined our approach to tackling some of limitations associated with volumetric video. More specifically, by capturing additional information, extracting more meaning from it and post-processing it so that it fits well into visual effects workflows. And this leads us to the end of this presentation. Thank you for your attention and also many thanks to co-authors of this presentation and everybody at Dimension. We will be happy to take a few questions.